Aloha and welcome to the program DPR, the Petroleum Industry Regulator. In our last edition, we brought to you what the Department of Petroleum Resources is and how it enforces the rules and regulations as stipulated by the laws of the Republic in the oil and gas. Now today, I will be looking at the downstream division of the department and how it monitors, regulates and even enforces rules on every aspect of the oil and gas industry that is closest to the people. But first things first, let me tell you what exactly is happening around the petroleum industry worldwide. I've got these tidbits for you. M. Suleiman, our lady, welcome. In a bid to better fulfill its mandate and consequently render top of the range services to the nation, the Department of Petroleum Resources, DPR, recently organized an interactive workshop for reporters covering Nigeria's oil and gas industry under the aegis of the Association of Energy Correspondents of Nigeria. The event, which took place at a serene resort in a pair division of Lagos State and proved to be fruitful and rewarding, was one that many looked forward to having. In his opening address, Chairman of the Association of Energy Correspondents of Nigeria, Mr. Olatunde Dodondawa praised the DPR's initiative in putting the workshop together, adding that it would enable the reporters better understand the technicalities of reporting the oil and gas sector. In the first session, veteran mass communication and media management guru, Mr. Simon Tumba, emphasized that in order to report fairly, accurately and comprehensively, the media needs a sound and knowledge of the industry, as well as the ability to analyze and report on its complexities. Paul also is head of DPR's Public Affairs Department. For the DPR, it is going to impact uh, positively on us because what it means is that the media, which are critically aligned with our aspirations, have a better platform to understand what we do to understand the technicalities involved in the oil and gas industry. The workshop was designed to promote understanding between them for mutual benefits and to improve the quality of energy reporting in the public interest. Nigeria's Minister of State, Dr. Ibe Kachuku, has cautioned Nigeria not to become complacent simply because of discoveries of new oil deposits almost on a daily basis. Dr. Kachuku said of note as how well the nation is able to utilize his golden liquid and not how long it lasted. The Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC Secretary General, Nigeria's Alhaji Mohamed Barkindu, has appreciated DPR's key role in the industry, adding that Nigeria is currently living in a golden age of unprecedented international statesmanship. Dr. Kachuku visited DPRs, NNPCs and some other participant stands at the exhibition venue. He was received at DPR stand by Mrs. Laide Shonola, the Deputy Head Corporate Affairs Unit of the Department of Petroleum Resources. The Nigeria Oil and Gas Expo is an annual gathering of industry players and stakeholders, local and international, and is designed to advance development and progress in every area of its operation to maximize the benefits of crude oil, its major revenue earner. This is a special announcement from the Department of Petroleum Resources. Gas is safe. Gas cylinders are to be kept outside. If you're buying LPG cylinder, look for NIS number on the cylinder. Exchange of gas cylinders with retailers during purchase is best practice instead of refilling from another cylinder. Buy gas from certified LPG plant. Repairing faulty gas cylinders is unsafe. For more information, visit the nearest DPR office or our website www.dpr.gov.ng. Welcome back. As our program is structured, well, I'll bring to you an in-depth report on the downstream division of the Department of Petroleum Resources, how it is structured and how it raises revenue for the federal government. Here's the report. The petroleum industry is one of the largest, most complex and most varied industries in the world. There is a number of logistics and phases which must be undertaken for potential oil and gas sites to be found and for the crude oil and gas to be produced, pumped, shipped, processed and sold. 
It is a long process and there are many companies, both big and small, that rely on the different parts of the process. That explains why the petroleum industry is classified into three sections. The upstream, midstream and the downstream. This classification makes it easier to understand. The upstream sector involves the initial discovery, production and extraction of oil and gas. The midstream entails the transportation and shipping of crude oil and gas. And the last stage of the process is the downstream sector. This sector involves the actual processing, selling and distribution of petroleum-based products and natural gas. The downstream sector of the oil and gas industry is actually the one that is the closest to the consumer. It is also perhaps the easiest of the three sectors for people to relate to. In the downstream sector, crude oil is pumped to processing plants where it is refined and eventually turned into various products which are then sold to the public. Some of the products commonly associated with the downstream sector of the oil and gas industry include liquefied petroleum gas LPG, liquefied natural gas LNG, petrol or PMS, diesel oil or AGO, jet oil or aviation kerosene, domestic kerosene and heating oil. Others are fuel oil, propane, asphalt, synthetic rubber, plastics, petroleum coke, lubricants, pharmaceuticals, antifreeze, fertilizer, and pesticides. In all, there are close to 6,000 products derivable from crude oil. This makes the downstream sector of the industry the largest in oil and gas processes. The downstream brings with it a wave of different opportunities to work with. In fact, there are literally thousands of different jobs in the downstream alone, meaning that whatever your skill, there is an oil and gas job out there for you. Against these vast opportunities, there is a very strict monitoring and regulation of this sector of the industry. In Nigeria, this responsibility falls on the downstream division of the Department of Petroleum Resources. The downstream division of the Department of Petroleum Resources monitors and supervises the storage and transportation of stabilized crude oil, hydrocarbon processing, storage, distribution and marketing of petroleum products. The division has so many roles to play to ensure steady supply of petroleum products in the country, especially premium Muto spirit. Its daily consumption is put at 38 million liters. Other functions of this division include defining and simplifying operational guidelines for operators, prompt processing of the quarterly petroleum products import permit applications, import vessel clearances, as well as depots and jetty licenses. These are executed through fast-track online processes to ensure that there are no hiccups in importation of petroleum products. As a result, marketers are now able to import products without quota restrictions due to liberalization. The downstream division is also saddled with the responsibility of ensuring that petroleum products storage facilities are fit for the purpose, ensuring quality control regimes for all products at production, supply, discharge and distribution points, and ensuring that operators deploy accurate and efficient products reception, measurement, and dispensing equipment. The division equally monitors on daily basis product stock at depots, quantity imported, as well as quantity trucked out to ensure adequate supply nationwide. Basically, we look out for the quality of the products, we look out for the quantity, 
and we look out for safe operations. We ensure that operations are done according to standards. The division also places daily surveillance on retail outlets to ensure that regulated products like PMS are sold to the public and not hoarded. It monitors manifests that truck out products from depots to ensure that the products are not diverted but get to designated locations. This is a 10 litre standard measurement can, otherwise uh, called seraphine can. It's already standardized at 10 litres. So what we're doing basically is we're going to verify the integrity of this pump, the dispensing pump. So we have just done one a run. You can see that for the 10 litre dispense into this measurement can, what we have there is a margin of 0 0.3. So what that means is it falls within the allowable limit. DPR's downstream division also flags up notices when product stocks decline beyond limits. It eliminates barriers to petroleum products distribution supply chain as well as encourages competition amongst industry players. However, for effective administration, monitoring and regulation of the downstream, the division is subdivided into three known as branches. They are the Retail Outlets and Blending Plants Branch, Product Depot and Jetties Branch, and Crude Terminal and Refining Operation Branch. The Products Depot and Jetties responsibilities are approval to construct tank farms, approval of storage and sales licenses, approval of facilities upgrade and modifications, as well as approval for certification of storage tanks, their calibrations and integrity tests. This branch also oversees product import and export permits, bunkering and coastal vessel clearance. A lot of people, uh, I think, are unaware of the very good work DPR has been doing over the years in ensuring that product of good quality uh, get to their, their, into their tanks, you know, for people using vehicles. It may interest you to know that we have a minimum of four checks that an average liter of petroleum product goes through before it gets to the end user. The first one is at the refinery where it is produced, the second one at the depot, the, fourth, the third one on the vessel itself that conveyed the product to the depot, and another one when, the de when it is leaving the depot for filling station. There is also additional uh, safety checks, quality checks, especially even at the, at the retail outlets. Every morning we encourage retail outlets and we require that they test the product before they sell it to the public. The downstream division generates revenue for the government through retail outlets and blending plants. It also generates revenue from licenses and permits in various stages through online applications. It does this through the following. Site suitability, approval to construct service stations, testing of tank pressure, tank calibration, supervision of underground tank burial, and final inspection before giving license to operate. Beyond the meter, meter factor for the meters, we ensure that safety is complied with. Now, safety is something that is enshrined across the various value chain of the establishment of this facility. From the establishment of the petrol station to the construction stage, and through the operations. The crude oil terminal and refining branch supervises the loading of crude oil into vessels and crude oil to the refineries. Our staff, well-trained staff of the department are present in the terminal 247, in other words, 24 hours a day, three, six, five days a year. The reason is because we cannot afford to lose one pint or one barrel of crude oil 
to be lost as a result of known monetary. So we monitor it from the production, from the export. Every morning, we carry out what they call fiscalization exercise. It entails going to the tank and measuring the amount of crude oil produced from the various fields. What an eye-opener of the downstream of the petroleum industry. Now, you may realize why this sector of the oil and gas industry is the closest to the consumer and why so much importance is attached to it. I, for one, I love that and I'm hoping to get a bit more of it. Now, well, I'll hand you over to Anthony Amusu for a one-on-one -on -one with Mrs. Ijoma Onyeri. She's the Deputy Director and Head of Downstream Monitoring and Regulations Division of DPR. Hello, and thank you for joining us on this edition of the program. With us today is the De Deputy Director and Head Downstream Department of Petroleum Resources, Mrs. Ijeoma Onyeri. Mrs. Onyeri, you're most welcome to this segment of the program. Thank you very much. So, like we hear often about the downstream sector, the upstream sector of the oil industry, and you are head of the downstream. We want you to explain to us when we talk downstream, what are we talking about? Downstream division is all about monitoring the activities of the downstream sector of uh, petroleum industry in Nigeria. In the downstream sector, is divided into four branches. The crude oil terminal, the product depot dep jetty, we call it PDJ, then the retail outlet monitoring, and again, the new blending plant. All the refined products, like the PMS, that is petrol, uh, kerosene, and uh, diesel, usually, they are stored in the tank farming at the depots. Then from the depots, they are lifted by trucking or through the pipeline to the designated the retail outlets where they are meant to go. That's what we do in a PDJ, that is product depot jetty. Then we have the lube blending plant. Lube blending plant is about uh, establishing the plants that uh, do uh, base oil blending and we, we start from the design construction of such a plant up to the extent of uh, the time we give them approval to construct and the approval to operate the base oil that comes from the refineries are being blended in the lube oil blending plant for to be used by adding other additives to get lubricating oil. That is all about lube blending. So we monitor the operation to construct and also to operate. The same thing goes to um, product depot jetty. From the design of the depots up to the construction phase and the operating the operational phase. We monitor the activities by granting them site suitability and uh, giving them approval to construct. Then from approval to construct, we now give them approval to operate. That is why you see all these tank farms at the depots. DPR monitor the activities. Your department is quite a very powerful one because you grant all the licenses for the various, at least four sections you have mentioned. For the man out there listening to this interview, what does he need to know if he wants to go into any of these areas you have mentioned? Apart from uh, retail outlets, the other ones you need to come and apply that you have an intention to build. Then we call you for a presentation, technical presentation. From there, we take it on. Then I now give you a guideline on all the processes you have to uh, follow before your facility is licensed by the DPR. However, I, I just want to let you know that uh, the downstream sector has uh, been automated. So you can do your application online. 
then um, from there we take it. It's all automated. When these licenses have been granted and people have started operating, how regularly now do you check to ensure that that standard they conformed or the guidelines they met before you give them the approval for them to operate, they are still maintaining and sustaining them? We have a consistent surveillance, monitoring. That's why we are monitoring the downstream. Depending on the locations, you know, they are scattered all over in the country. And uh, we have our offices. Apart from the headquarters, we have field offices that do the routine checks. And we have a timeline. Some of them expire in a... Uh, virtually almost every year we do renewal of those approval and licenses we have granted them, depending as the case may be. So the depot licenses is renewable. So from your monitoring out there, what kind of infractions do you observe over the years? From retail outlets, you and I know what is going on in the retail outlets. Some of the infractions are over hoarding. That is hoarding of the petroleum products or creating artificial scarcity when there is a petroleum product available. Then diversion and uh, under dispensing of uh, pops at the filling station. Can we have an idea of some of these sanctions? Yes, uh, under dispensing, if you found out that a station is under dispensing, you know it has to do with the pumps. The reps will come in and check with their seraphine cans to actually find out if each all the pumps are under dispensing. If all the pumps are under dispensing, each pump will pay a hundred thousand naira. Yeah. Okay, that is for retail outlets. That is for retail okay, outlets. Then when it comes to depot, you know, um, all the depots are supposed to sell at a particular ex depot price. If they sell above X depot price, and uh, we have with uh, our reps are stationed at the depots on daily basis, so if they are found guilty, there's a sanction to to that. So let's look at the loop plants. What kind of infractions do you find in those areas? In loop plant, you know, uh, there are a lot of uh, infractions. That's why we have told the uh, motorists, those the end users of lubricants get your lubricants at the appropriate licensed filling stations and at the appropriate licensed lube blending plant. The, we want to look at the issue of these filling stations. It's uh, been of concern to so many people that you find filling stations around residential areas and people are worried. Is DPR concerned and what are you doing about such situations? You know, we are really, 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 really concerned about that. Uh, in most cases, we found out that uh, some of these filling stations were there before the residential were built around the, the stations. But however, uh, the ones that have not been in existence and they intend to build their retail outlets, we have our guidelines. Some houses came and met up with them, so they are there. Then what are we doing to ensure that we don't have any... Fire incidents yes. or whatever. Yeah, um, our safety divisions have uh, taken it upon them to make sure that uh, the owner of the filling station, they make sure they use their standard operating procedure at all times. Well, uh, Mrs. Uh, Ijeoma Yeri, Deputy Director and Head Downstream Department of Petroleum Resources, we want to thank you so much for your time and for having educated members of the public on what they need to know, especially about your department. Thank you so much. Thank you very much uh, for having time to be with me today. This is a special announcement from the Department of Petroleum Resources. Gas is safe. Gas cylinders are to be kept outside. If you're buying LPG cylinder, look for NIS number on the cylinder. Exchange of gas cylinders with retailers during purchase is best practice instead of refilling from another cylinder. Buy gas from certified LPG plant. Repairing faulty gas cylinders is unsafe. For more information, visit the nearest DPR office or our website www.dpr.gov.ng.
It's a wrap on today's edition of the program. Well, I'll be with you again same time next week. But please, continue being with us as we strive to educate and make you understand a lot of happenings in the Nigerian oil and gas industry. Until then, it's bye-bye.